Good evening, ladies. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you all for tuning in for this week's episode of Bridging the Gap from War to Wisdom. Come in this room. Come in the room. Do me a favor once you come in. Invite, tag, and share. Invite, tag, and share. We're going to allow you some time to come on in this room. Move that thing out the way. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for tuning in for Bridging the Gap from War to Wisdom. My name is Taniqua Matthews, the CEO and founder of Women Achieving Victory Everywhere. Do me a favor, come in here. Hello, hello, hello. I see you all popping in. Sometimes I can see the comments, sometimes I don't. So if I don't see it, um, don't get discouraged. Sometimes the internet is a little fickle, so I'm not able to see. So as you do me a favor and you invite and you're tagging and you're sharing and you're allowing other people to see, I'm going to go ahead and open us up with prayer so we can dive right in because I don't want to keep you here long this evening. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for yet another day, another chance, another opportunity to be able to come into your presence like never before. I thank you for every person that's watching on this live, those that will come back and watch on a replay, that there's something that are said or done that will be able to draw them closer to you so they have a deeper connection with you like never before. I pray that you will allow my mouth to be used by you to do and say what you would have for me to say on this evening. I thank you and I praise you and I glorify your holy and righteous name. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I know my host is trying to um, um, come in as well. My co-host is trying to come in. But I just wanted to, one, say happy Women's History Month to all of you beautiful queens out there. I know that this is the middle of the week. It's the beginning of the month. It is a month that we celebrate the history of our beautiful women and all of the accomplishments, the strides, all of the trials, the obstacles, and everything that we've had to endure to get to this point in our lives and the things that we can enjoy now today for all of those pioneers who paved the way and the path for us to be able to enjoy the luxuries that we have now today. So I wanted to come in here and I normally have um, for the month a group of ladies and they're going to I'm going to start sharing with you all of these beautiful queens that are going to be coming in and joining with me as guests throughout the month. But um, God laid on my heart to be able to um, share with you about me and my journey as well, because I know that you normally see other people that would join me as guests on the show. But um, he wanted me to share with you about some of the challenges and some of the things that I've had to endure in order to get to where I am today as well. So I just wanted to start off for those of you who don't know who I am. My name is Taniqua Matthews. I am the CEO and founder of Women Achieving Victory Everywhere. It is a nonprofit 501c3 organization for military women and families. And we are here to inspire, to motivate, encourage, and empower our women to be able to overcome obstacles, to overcome trials, to be able to go from the wars that we deal with on a daily basis, whether it's physical, psychological, mental, or whatever, and use wisdom in order for us to overcome those hurdles to get to where we have been predestined to be. So um, I'm also a custom jewelry designer under the name of His and Hers Jewels, LLC. Those of you who don't know, but there are some that, that do not. Um, I am also a mother of four of God's greatest gifts on this earth, four boys, ages 20, 16, 14, and 12, Tyrell, Jordan, Jeremiah, and Antoine. Those are God's gifts that he gave to me directly. And so I'm grateful for them. Uh, I also sit in the first sergeant position with the 343rd Ambulance Company out of Richmond, Virginia. And of course, with 27 years of serving in the military between active duty and reserve time, it has truly been an amazing journey. And another one of my positions is I am the chaplain with the Kappa Epsilon Psi Military Sorority Incorporated, the Hampton Road Southside chapter. I just want to give them some love on today as well. And I also am the assistant track coach with the Northampton um Northampton High School track team. So I just wanted to just share with you some of the things. So when you see me doing things here and there, um, those are some of the things that I'm doing. And also we've just concluded our 
third, not one, not two, not th but three Amazon bestsellers. So for those of you who have not already seen some of those books, um, our first book, Forces of Change. The second book is Words of Wisdom for the Heart and Soul, Volume 1. And our launch, which was this prior Saturday, was Words of Wisdom for the Heart and Soul, Volume 2, lessons, insight, and guidance from leaders of influence. So it has truly been an amazing journey for me to be able to be here with you. And I want to shout out my Restoration Outreach Healing Ministry family, my personal family and friends. Okay, I think I've gotten everybody. If I missed you, charge my head, not my heart, because you know truly I love and appreciate all of you for being able to come here and to take time out of your wonderful Wednesday just to share with me. I know. Um, and so I just wanted to share with you some of the things that has been on my heart, because um, as some of you may know, our families have been going through a lot of different things and challenges throughout even since the beginning of this year. So now we're in month three. We're at the beginning of month three. So from one January up until today, we have had so many different trials, so many situations, um, loss of loved ones, um, illnesses, injuries, all different types of things. And I just wanted to share with you because I have to encourage myself, even though uh, I come and encourage you, but I had to encourage myself because for the last five weeks, I have had a family member in the hospital, close family member, brother, grandmother, bro another one of my brothers, and even my uncle today. So I ask that you would keep him lifted in prayer as well as we continue to pray for him and his family. And our family is pretty much spread out, but I wanted to be able to come and encourage you because one thing that I know about God is that God is a healer. He's a miracle worker. He's a provider. He's a protector. He continues to keep us even when we don't know how to keep ourselves. So in the midst of adversity, he always gives us just what we need. And so the word that he gave me today came from um, Psalms there, I believe it's 37 and four. And it is delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So I want to shout out um, Miss Brenda. She is one of our members at the Restoration Outreach Healing Ministry. And so she made me these pillows and on these pillows, they're full of different scriptures. And so, you know, in the midst of crying and, and just praying out and you're really calling on God, he showed me that word. And I had to go back and remember that if we delight ourselves in him, he'll give us the desires of our heart. He knows what we need before we ask of it. He knows the portion that we need before we ask of it. He knows every single thing about us, even the number of hairs on our head. So when we come to him, he already knows. He just wants us to be able to come to him. So when I say those things and I've laid out a simple, you know, a very quick bio of some of the things that I've done, as you see me going to and from and I'm traveling here and traveling there and with my family members going, you know, through some of the things that they're going through in life, God still is sitting high and looking low. God is still who God is. He is still a promise keeper. Yes, he's still a promise keeper. Hello, mom. How are you? He's still a promise keeper. He tells us that there is nothing impossible for him. So we have to trust and believe that as we wake up every morning and we sit ourselves down, and even today when I had some issues and you know the power went out and I was trying to figure things out, even in the midst of that, I just sat still and I said, you know what, Lord, I thank you even for the power. Because let me tell you something, there are sometimes we take some things for granted. We take for granted that when we turn on the faucet that there's hot and cold water coming out. We take for granted that when we get to our homes that we can turn the key and open up the door. We take for granted sometimes that when we inhale and exhale that we breathe in air because there are some people that right now 
are not able to do those things on their own. We can get up and we can move around. They may not be in the this pace that we want to move, but we have the mobility of our limbs. And sometimes we take those little things for granted. God wants to remind us that if we continue to delight ourselves in him and we're reading his word and we're trusting in his word and we're leaning on his word and leaning on his everlasting arms, that he will give us our heart's desires. Now, please understand that if those hearts desire there are some things you know some of us want to hit the mega million and all those things that may not be the desire of that god wants for us but god wants to bless us god wants us to live an abundant and prosperous life but we also have to do our part and in that part of doing our part we have to understand that we have to have something to cling on to and the one thing that i love to cling on to is the word of god why? Because the word doesn't return void. Everything is set out to do. Indeed, it shall do. I'm going to go ahead and let my co-host in here, ladies and gentlemen, as she joins me. Hey, Tammy, I'm going to go ahead and, and allow us to be able to understand that as we rightly divide that word and we take that word and we allow that word to manifest itself in our lives and it rises up in us that when we get bumped when things happen to us you know when you get those phone calls when you know i got a phone call from my mom at one something in the morning and i was just awake i don't even know i don't even think she realized that i was bright eyed bushy tail as they say i was awake and so in that when she called and she gave me you know when we get them phone calls in the middle of the night from family members oftentimes it's something that's really not a good phone call so i had to begin praying and in the praying and the crying out you know i thank god that he hears us 24 7. he said he never slumbers he never sleeps so when we're in the middle of the night when we getting up and we're making our rounds we're checking the doors and we're looking around and we're trying to figure out why we can't go back to sleep pick up that word pray unto the father because the father is not asleep you might call your girlfriends or your or your male friends or whomever and they may be asleep there are some of us that are up all different hours of the night however god is always awake and he's always there He's, when I tell you, I just love that he gives us that word to cling on to because it gives us so much strength that when we don't know what to say, when we don't know what to do, when we don't know which way to go, whether we go left or we go right, we can hold on to God's word because God's word never fails. It never fails. It never, I'm going to say it again because somebody need to get it. God's word never fails. It never fails. And so in even as I was getting different phone calls and text messages and emails and different things that were that had been happening i just want to just take the time to say lord i thank you i praise you i glorify your holy and righteous name because without you i am nothing i am the mere vapor here for such a time as this to do the work that you have already purposed for me to do and sometimes we take those things we don't understand and we take it for granted because we don't realize that our lives are not our own we may sing those songs our lives are not our own to you I belong, you know, we want to withhold nothing. We say all these things, but is when it really comes down to it and the rubber meets the road, do we really truly believe that we want to give God our all withholding absolutely nothing? Even as we are getting up and we're starting our day, as we're moving around and about, do we really surrender and wholeheartedly give him everything, all of us, or we only give him the, the kibbles and bits? We only give him the pieces that he wants us to get, that we want him to have. Lord, I want you to fix this piece over here because these things are not going right. My children are not acting right. I want you to fix this over here, but don't, I don't want you to take away from me because I still want to hold on to some anger and some frustration because somebody did something to me that I don't like. So we, I don't want you to fix that right yet. Give me some time to clean that part of it up. But I need you to go ahead and deal with this. No, we have to surrender all. We can't say, God, I want you to fix these things, but then withhold things from him because our lives belong to him. And if our lives belong to him, we have to give him everything, every all of us, not just the little small pieces that we want him to have. And so he reminds us of these things constantly to keep giving him, giving and giving and giving unto him. 
That's the reason why we pray without ceasing. Why do we pray without ceasing? Because we know that prayer is a weapon and it changes things. Because we know that when we pray until the Father, we know that he's up there. He's doing some things up there. He's moving some things around. He's shifting and moving mountains on our behalf. He told us that we can speak to the mountain, be thy removed, be thy cast into the sea, and it's going to move. So we have to understand the mountains of things that's growing inside of our head. All those things that's trying to hinder us and infiltrate our mind from being able to focus on the purpose and plan that God has for our life. It's going to move if we speak those things into the atmosphere and we truly stand on faith that God can do exactly what he said he was going to do. So I wanted to be able to come in here and to encourage you, because let me tell you something, when you're going through something and you can find enough strength, because there was, there was a, a part of my day when I said, you know what, I'm not going to be able to do these things. I'm not going to be able to keep going forward. And I, I had to then say out loud, the devil is a liar. God, you purpose for our lives to do the things that you have already put in us. You told us that the gifts and the talents that you put in us was to be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. How dare I continue to want to withhold those things from us, from the from doing what you told me to do? How dare I want to hold on to those things just for me for convenience when, it, when I feel like I want to do it, when I'm having a good day, when I just got my hair done, just got my nails done, when I just got my fresh outfit? No. I said that I will, for you I live and for you I die. It does not matter what it looks like. It don't matter what it feels like. Tammy, go ahead. Be, go ahead, Tammy. Because I'm telling you something. I'm going to tell you, how, I'm gonna tell you about, about how God would just use your situations and turn things around right in front of your eyes. Do you take a moment to sit back and reflect on the things of old a year before now? Five years ago? Ten years ago? My son, my oldest son, yeah, I, I, he, when he called me yesterday, he called me yesterday. And let me tell you something. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to all of you who come back and support in any capacity that you support. Whether you send words of encouragement, whether you share this stream, whatever it is. My son called yesterday and he said, Mom, I just want to let you know something. I just want to tell you how good God really is. And I said, son. I said, okay, now mind you, I'm bubbling up because I'm excited because I never really heard him talk like that before. And he said to me, he said, mom, you shared that post about when I was going through um, and they, we thought that they was going to have to send him to the hospital because he had to have all four of his wisdom teeth pulled last Friday. And he started to have a reaction to the medicine and it took four people to hold him down. And the dentist came out and talked to me and he said, listen, um, I'm, I don't think we're going to be able to service him here. We're going to have to send him somewhere else because I don't want to give him anything else because we have um, we have the anesthesiologist here and she doesn't want to give him any more medicine because we don't know what type of reaction he's going to have to it. So she, he said, we're going to let him sleep it off. The office is closed. It's two o'clock. The office is closed. Closed, but we're not going to leave him because we know that he's traveling from North Carolina to Virginia just to get this done. So we're going to let him sleep for a little while, but we're going to monitor him if that's okay with you. And then we're going to see how he reacts to it. And he got his teeth pulled and he was in pain as expected. And then I shared that um, they told him you can't operate any machinery or drive for 48 hours, which means he had to stay. And so we found out on Saturday night that the same place where he worked, that place was shot up and he would have been there. <laughs> he would have been there because he was getting ready. They was getting ready to send him back home. But he would have been there at that job, him and my nephew both. And anything could have happened. He could have been right in the midst of the crossfire because a, a bullet don't have no name on it. For those of you who know, bullets don't have no name on it. You can aim one way and it can backfire, ricochet or anything and hit somewhere else. And so when he called me and he said, mom, I just want to say I got uh, joy when I was reading that post. He said, and I got so excited about rereading it. He said, because I didn't even know all those things was happening. He said, and then I just want to tell you, thank you. Because when I was here with you for this whole week, I seen how you had to keep doing different things to help my brothers and I. And I did, I took it for granted when I was younger. See, somebody not understanding what I'm saying because he's 20 years old, right? And he'll be 21. But there that you have to understand 
that, you know, the Bible tells us to train up a child in the way they should go, that when they get old, they won't depart from it, right? So as those seeds was being planted and as they was being watered, see, God can give increase because the seed was planted and somebody came and watered it. And he said, mom, he just kept saying, my God, my God, my God, Lord, I thank you. Mom, for just being who you are. I thank you for taking us to church. I thank you for, he was just pouring out his heart and all I could do was cry because I was so happy that he was able to be able to get it. It was just like the light bulb just switched on. He said, but I got even better news for you. I said, okay, sunshine. I call my kids sunshine. I call them doctor, whatever their name is. And they have a little sunshine, S-O-N, shine, right? With a blue heart. Cause that's my love for, for them. And he he said, I said, what is it, sunshine? He said, mom, he said, I read every one of those comments and everybody that said that they was praying for me. He said, I want to tell you that as soon as I finished reading it, before I even got a chance to comment, I got a phone call and they wanted to hire me for a new job. And I said, he said, I just left the interview and I start on Monday and I got a $1,500 increase. <laughs> Won't God do it? See, you don't understand. See, it's, it's something about being able to trust in God. See, God had a plan. He had a plan and he knew that my son was going to be here for the week. He knew that he was going to be able to be there and he knew that something was going to happen. But see, God will keep us out of harm's way and plant a hedge of protection around us and dispatch his legion of angels to protect us from danger seen and unseen. And we don't even know. So I just wanted to, to share that little tidbit of, of, of information with you at this time, because let me tell you something, you know, um, just just being able to hear him say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. You don't understand how hard and how long I have been asking for him to be able to pour out his heart to God. I really wanted him to understand how good God is and how God kept us when we could have been lost and in, in, in bed, dead and in the grave multiple times. Even he remembers when I had the heart attack. He said, I remember you on the bed, mom. I remember when you was crying out. I remember when you said, listen, I need you to make sure that you guys stay together. I need you to take care of each other. In the event that something happens to me, then I need you to be able to take care of one another. I need y'all to still love on one another. That's something I stress with them all the time. Because one thing about love, love covers a multitude of sin. And God is love. And God reminds us that we're to love our neighbor as ourselves. And our neighbor could be our biological brother, our sister, our mother, our father, our cousin, our, my co-host. I'm going to let her jump in here because I'm telling you so. I'm gonna, go ahead, Tam, because I'm, I'm I'm full right now. I'm full. I'm, I'm full. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, my God. My God. My God. Mm -mm -mm. I apologize for my tardiness. I've had some little di difficulties. Oh, I am on tonight. This this show on tonight is all about you because I'm I'm reminded David said I had to pat myself on the back. He had to encourage himself in the Lord. So even though you was going through these last couple of days, you had to go through it. It was necessary. And when you talk about your son, see, we as mothers, if I could be real just for a moment, as mothers, we want the best for our children. And we 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 they're a product of us. Mm -hmm. So we pour into our children. We pour, 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 pour. We pour so much into our children, nieces, nephews, cousins, whatever, grandchildren. Nobody's left out. However, we pour and we pour so much into them that we like, when are you going to get it? Mm -hmm. And it seems like they don't never get it. But I'm reminded the words that's train up a child in the way they should go. Mm -hmm. When they get old, they shall not depart. Mm -hmm. If they do walk away from it, they're going to always have that one thing in the back of their mind. If they do something, the Holy Ghost is going to bring it to their remembrance and it's going to rule them back in. However, we thank God for your son and the testimony, because even as you shared it with me, and just to think about, he could have went back to North Carolina with all that anesthesia. I mean, how, I mean, with four teeth being pulled, that's pain. Four, not one, but four. And then, especially if they was laying on the sinuses or the nerve, that's a that's a that's a risky procedure. Mm -hmm. And for him to have to drive back to North Carolina, thankfully that he did not. But if he had went back to North Carolina, we don't know what could have happened. However, we thank God for grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Mercy. And it was for a reason why he was here for this week. Because he, he had to be in a place of solitude. And if you think about Jesus, he had to go away and be by himself for a minute. He asked the disciples, can you not watch? Just one hour. One hour. Just one hour. Uno. One hour. And what did they do? They fell asleep. Mm -hmm. So they slept on the assignment. But however, our children, they go to sleep on the assignment. Oh I sleep on the assignment. Come on. Somebody, and I'm reminded the songwriter said, somebody pray for me. They took out time and prayed for me. Yes, yes, prayed yes. Their, song, their mind. Because they prayed for me. Mm -hmm. Prayers. And the Bible tells us the prayers are the, the effectual fervent prayers. And when you yes. pray fervently, uh -huh. that's sweat, some blood, some tears, all of, <laughs> all of that. You travail. And then for those that just have not had babies, when we as mothers, <laughs> when we go into those labor pains, that's pain. That's real pain. And you're travailing and you're, you're doing, you're breathing, you're pushing, you're breathing, you're pushing, you're breathing, you're pushing, you're doing all of that just to bring in something beautiful into the world. Mm -hmm. So even when we're praying, we're breathing, we're pushing, we're breathing, we're pushing, praying, pushing, praying, and, and saying, God, can you do this? We turn it down our place, we're fasting, we're calling on the name of God. You, it, you He had to go through that. And he, so he had to be by himself on yeah. this to realize that I had a I had a praying mother, I had a praying grandmother, I had a praying nanny. They was praying for me. And not only that, if you go to the book of Acts, when uh Paul was locked up in jail, I think it's Acts, I don't have my Bible with me. Paul was Paul and Silas was locked up in jail. Right? Mm -hmm. And they were in jail. And what happened? At midnight, mm -hmm. the jailhouse starts shaking because the praises of the most high was going up. Yeah. They was praying, and then there's another section in there when it was talking about someone else. They was uh, he was locked up. Peter, I believe it was, was locked up with, mm -hmm. and they, and he had soldiers on every side. But then, but they was, but they was back at the house praying for old boy to get out of jail. And what they was doing, they was praying, they was interceding, they was doing it fervently. They was praying, pushing, breathing, fast, mm -hmm. down the place. They was sweating tears. Yes, they was doing that blood. And they was doing it. What happened? <laughs> the the jailhouse shook, and Peter came out. He was walking out. Mm -hmm. They came out because the praises of God. When you when you really pray and praise God, and even in your trials and tribulations, that's when you can worship God the most. Yes. If you can take your focus off your problem, and you can put it on the problem solver, and when you begin to worship God and just begin Come to on. say who you are. I will worship you and I adore you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I'll never forget for where you brought me from. When you start singing them old songs and then God just rain down on me and just endow mm -hmm. with your Holy Ghost and, yes. and just in the glory and just want to be all up in his glory. You just want to be in the bosoms of him and you just want to say, Lord, I just want to be where you are. Where you are, God, I want to be because when I'm with you, there's peace. When I'm with you, there's serenity. When I'm with you, there's, there's whatever I need. So, so he had to go he had to come here and be by himself he mm -hmm. had to go through those mm -hmm. other people he see you go through because it's going to make them appreciate so most parents they just give 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 but you show them you you planted those seeds for all their lives you planted you nurtured you nourished you nurtured you nourished you fed you prayed you fasted you was fighting in prayer so yes and then for him to come back, it's just like the 10 lepers. One came back just to say thank you. Just to say thank you. Say it, thank you. Just the, just the, the simple fact of, th of the thank you and 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 just um, going back quickly to touch on the one thing of the birthing. Because although we may not physically birth, we all have something in us to birth. We all have something in us that needs to, to come out. So as you know, we're going through these pains and it may, whether they're physical, whether they're psychological, whether they're spiritual, whatever it is, we have a something to birth out because all of us have a purpose here on this earth. God did not plant us here to do nothing. He did mm. not plant us here for us to sit. 
He didn't put us here for us to look to the left and look to the right and look all around for everybody else and what everybody else is doing and not being able to walk upright and do what he has He has put us here on this earth to do. And so as we think about even the birthing process and how difficult it is, how you hear the some people labor for a long period of time. So if you think about it, I'm going to take it from the natural to the spiritual for just one minute. If you'll just allow me to indulge you for just a minute. Because you hear people, some people have very, very short labors. Then you have some that have very long labors. And I'm reminded of even, I saw a, a quick, quick, quick clip video where the man said, um, he was singing to the congregation. He said, um, some of you have been really struggling this week. And he said, come on down to the front. And it was two young ladies that came to the front. And one young lady came down, he gave her $100. The next young lady came down and he gave her a five. And he said, but wait, come on back. He said, you gave her five more. And then he gave her five more. It's the same as those who have to endure those lengthier labors. Well, you're sitting here and you're saying, oh man, you know, this person got this immediately. This person got this blessing really quick. Well, some people it's going to take a little bit longer because the thing that's inside of you is so much greater that it takes longer for it to come to fruition. It takes longer for that at birth to come forward. So there are times when we're sitting down and we're saying, Lord, why is this taking so long? Why is this job giving me such a hard time when I've applied for 15 other positions? Why is it taking a very difficult time for my husband or my wife to come? Because I've been praying and I've been to so many weddings and I've caught the bouquet and the garter at so many different weddings. Why is it taking so long? Because I'm doing these things to to write my books and to start my businesses and to be able to get out here in the community and I'm out and I'm giving and giving and giving. Why is it taking so long for me, God, when I see that things are happening so swiftly for other people and it happens just like that? Well, that's because there is a purpose and a plan that is greater than things that we can think or imagine that God has planted inside of you that it's going to take some time. And if it comes out prematurely, it's not going to be right. So that's the reason why it takes a little longer for the birthing process of those gifts to be able to come to fruition. It takes a little bit longer for you to understand what is my purpose. I know that I'm really good over here at doing this. I'm a really good artist. I'm a really good crafter. I'm a really good, you know, speaker. I'm a, you know, whatever those things are. And you look around and you say, you know, I know that I can do these things. I'm really good with writing resumes, whatever that thing is. And I know I'm covering a lot of different grounds, but you know what your thing is, whatever your fill in the blank is, that's what it is. And we, if we go back to, and you know, we're talking about March the 1st, right? And we go back to just a couple of months ago when we turned over into 2023 and we started writing visions and we started writing manifestations. And I challenged you to write a list of 300 things. Yes, I challenged you all to write 300 things that you wanted God to change in your life throughout the course of 2023. Some of you did it. Some of you may not have. But as you start to check those things off the list and you see those things manifest because you trusted in God, because you had faith that he can do it, because even when you think you're right there at the edge, like the songwriter says, I was right at the edge of a breakthrough, but I couldn't see it. There are times when you're right there at the edge of the breakthrough. And do you realize that the fog is going to be right there oftentimes at the edge of the breakthrough. Right when you're right at the edge, things start going haywire. You start having health issues. You start having complications within your relationships or your marriages or your friendships. People that you thought were on your side are the ones who turn and walk away and they make up some reasons why they don't want to communicate or have any issues with you. There are so many different things that happen at one time, but you have to understand what you pray for because everybody can't go with you in the next season. Everybody can't be with you when your gifts are being birthed because those things that are attached to you, some people are leeches and they will try to suck all those things out of you because God has a plan for you to move past where you are to get to where he needs you to be. And in order to do that, you got to let go of the weight. That's why he said, lay aside every weight 
every sin that so easily besets you and keep your eyes on the prize. That means we got to have tunnel vision when we're going forward to do the work that God has purposed for us to do here on the earth. Because if we're looking you know, to the left, and we're looking to the right, then then we get caught up in, oh man, this person over here, this this person started a whole nother business. This person got a brand new job, and I've been on this job longer, but this person got a um got a promotion on the job, and I've been here for three years, and they just started a, a year and a half ago, but they got a promotion before me. Let me tell you something. One thing you have to understand, God said he'll redeem the time that the canker worm is taken away. And the same way that you feel like you being pushed back, let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, God will slingshot you forward so you will be ahead of the same ones that you were looking at and you were saying to yourself, Lord, I see them and yes, you're happy for them. You're excited because God is blessing them. But what about me, Lord? Anybody have a what about me moment? I know I do. I have what about me moments. People will look and say, I've, I've had people that say, oh, you're over here. You're doing this and you're doing that. You have no idea some of the things that go through my inner court circle of people that I communicate with. They hear all of the, the woe is me. I don't want to feel like doing this. And I don't want, I don't want to, I know God is not telling me to do this. And I know God is not telling me to do that. Well, you, they see all the, the paddling. They see all of that. All you see sometimes are just the people, the duck that's gliding across the water. You see the outcome. And let me just put this pin right there for a minute. You can't tell everybody everything. Because there are some people that will constantly try to do everything that they can to ruin, distract, and take you off your course because they don't want to see you get ahead because it's you. I'm going to say it again. There are people that will try to distract you and take you off your course and pull you back because they don't want you to get ahead because they are intimidated by the things that's in you that you don't even know yet exist inside of you. There are people that don't want, they, how dare God bless her or him? Do you know what they cry about behind the scenes? And let me tell you something, you have to be be mindful of even your inner court because them same people that you crying out to are sometimes the same people that secretly despising you because of your moving forward. They're despising the fact that you're able to keep going in spite of. They're despising the fact that God is blessing you because of. They don't see all the things that you see. Like the songwriter said, you know, and Mary Mary said, you know, they don't see how you going home at night and how you praying. They don't see that you're fasting. They don't see that you're even travailing and laboring for those that are around you that you're connected to. Lord, I'm I'm praying for you, my sister and my brother. When they when you're P R A Y I N G for them to the Father, they are P R E Y against you because how dare you think that you're going to get ahead of me what has qualified and equipped you that you feel that you can get ahead of me there are people that are truly intimidated by you but you have to keep moving forward and it doesn't matter i've seen so many accounts and so many people people i pray for they don't even know i'm praying for them because i don't have to tell them that i'm praying for them I, when they call or they text me or they say, listen, I'm going through these different things. You best believe I have a prayer list so long that I'm praying. And then when they come and they tell me that these things happen and that thing happened and so on and so forth. I thank God for it. Because one thing I know, one thing I know that the weapon of prayer is an amazing weapon. It is an amazing weapon. Now, people will say, oh, you put on the whole armor, your helmet, your breastplate, you know, the sword of spirit, the shield of faith, your feet are sandaled with the readiness of the gospel, and you got, you still need your prayer because your prayer is when you're walking by faith and not by sight. Your prayer is when you're believing something to happen that hasn't even happened yet, but you're trusting that God is going to make it happen because he tells us to trust in him with all our heart and lean out on our own understanding and in all our ways to direct our paths because we want God to order our steps. And even in our steps, we want God to 
to look at this mind. He said we re transform by the renewing of our mind. So if our mind is renewed because we're not worried about what's going on over here on Front Street. We're not worried about what's going on over there on Second Street. We're not looking back because we're not going that way. And we don't have eyes in the back of our head. We have to keep moving forward because we have a purpose and a plan and our feet don't walk backwards. Now, we might be able to skate backwards and do all that fancy stuff and everything. But let me tell you something. Even when you're doing something and you're going in an opposite direction of what you would normally go, what happens? You still have to maintain your balance. You still have to look forward. You still have to make sure that you're going in the right direction. See, God wants to make sure that we're going in the right direction. Let me tell you, I, I, I'm here to tell you, do you think that it's easy every single week coming in here and being able to, you know, know that there are things that are going on with, with me, know that there's things going on with my family. And when God says go, let me tell you something. Wash your face, put some oil on, and you go. That part. <laughs> Ain't about that. me. Our lives are not our own. That's what the songwriter says, says right? Want me to remind you? My life is not my own. To you, I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. That's what the songwriter says. My life is not my own. I give myself to you. So if you truly give yourself to him, why do we worry about things we cannot control? He said we're not supposed to worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what we're going to wear, because it has enough worries in itself. That's what God tells us. So if we know that, why do we do it? Because let me tell you why. Because we're human. We're human. Because we want to control things. And when things are out of our control, it makes it difficult for us. It's difficult for us to control, for, for not to have control. But we allow our bosses to control what time we come in, what time we leave, what time we go to lunch, what time we come back. Military, they, we allow them control what time we get up, what time we eat, what we're going to wear, how we're going to wear, how we wear our hair, so on and so forth, right? You know? We allow people to control us, but the father who knows every intricate detail about us, we don't allow him who already knows what's in our purpose for tomorrow to control us, to show us the path, to follow his instructions that he's laid out for us. Tim, go ahead. You was good. You was all good. Go ahead. Because I'm, tell, I'm telling you, I, I'm I, I can only tell y'all about me and how... You know, today was a challenge. These last couple of days, I was curled up and I was balled up and I was just like, Lord, I just don't understand certain things. And, you know, I want to I want to say thank you to Natasha, Dr. Natasha Bivens. She a doctor now, y'all. Dr. Natasha Bivens. And she shared um, so eloquently last night about how is it so difficult sometimes that as we go through. And we have a great moment. We celebrate great things because, you know, I'm celebrating the book launch, book three. So excited. You know, we were able to come out. I had my grandmother and my mom and my friend there with me. I got to, you know, mingle with some of my co-authors and the visionary and everything. It was an amazing day to be able to um, cherish that milestone. And within a 48 hour period, all of a sudden, it was like the weight of the world comes on your shoulders. Do you ever have times when, you know, things are really, really good? And then before you know it, it's like this whole melancholy feeling just comes all over you and you're trying to you're trying to shake it. And you're like, what's going on? Why are these things happening? Why do I feel so upset? Why do I feel like I can't move? Why I have no pleasure or interest in doing anything? Why I don't want to get up? I don't feel like doing this. I don't want to do that. So on and so forth. Do we have times when those things happen? Well, I had a couple of days of that. And I said, you know what, Lord? Uh-uh, I got to shake this thing off because you said that you were going to supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. Lord, you said that you was going to guide my path. You said that you was going to take care of me. You said that you know the plans that you have for me to prosper me and not to harm me, but to give me a hope and a future. So why am I sitting here wallowing and crying and, and being upset? 
feeling, you know, I don't want to call this person. Everybody tell you to call them. When, when, you know, hey, you know, if you need anything, call me. Then when you call people, they don't answer. Then you get frustrated. Then you don't want to call nobody. Anybody have any of those moments where you say, okay, I'm going to call this person. First of all, it takes a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of chipping away at your pride to even call that person and tell them, listen, I'm going through some things right now. This is what's happening, so on and so forth. And, you know, I just want, I just want you to pray for me. I just want some, you know, to encourage me. I don't need you to give me no insight. I just want, sometimes you just want people to just listen. You don't want nobody to say nothing. You don't want nobody to, you know, give you, you know, just want to listen. Sometimes you just need a listening ear. And then nobody answers the phone. You want to call five people. Nobody answers the phone. Newsflash. God wants your attention. He wants your attention. Talk to the father because he's always listening. He's always listening. See, we're not always listening. We're not always obedient. We're not always doing what he tells us to do, but he's always listening. He never will never. He's not going to turn a deaf ear on us. He's not. He hear us. Now, he may not always agree with the things that we say because, you know, um, you know, we some of the things that we want are, are worldly or fleshy, or as, as some people would say. And these are not things that are going to that line up with the purpose and plan that he has for us. So we have to understand that. We have to understand and move forward into what he's telling us to do. Right? Right. So move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Don't worry about the unanswered phone calls. Call on call on God. His it's, phone is always, his phone always on 24-7. His line is never busy. Ne say, oh, my, spirit is, my spirit is leaving. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, back in the day we had those landlines with the one way, and you calling your friend, and the line is busy. And I, I called yeah, call the welfare line back in the day. Yeah, I called the welfare line. <laughs> and you had to call the, the the operator to say, you know, she had to try to break the call. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have a direct connection with the Father. Direct connection. Jesus, he gonna incline his ear, and he's gonna hear, he gonna hear you. But in those moments when you're going through whomever this is for, who, when you're going through those dark moments, the scripture tells us, I will lift up my eyes into the hills from which come my help. Mm -hmm. So if you're down in the valley, you're in that valley just for a moment. Mm -hmm. In that valley, your situation, your problems, your circumstances should not weigh you down that much. Mm -hmm. But I had, I had to remind myself and I had to encourage myself over this past weekend because I was letting that some things that God had brought to pass. I was letting that stuff weigh me down on Saturday. I mean, I did not talk to nobody on Saturday. I didn't want to talk. Mm -hmm. And I had to remind, I had to be, he had to remind me because you're in the valley. You still got to lift your eyes up. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you're in your valley experience, when you at your lowest and your lowest of lowest, that's when you're going to have a mountaintop praise. Come on. You can praise you. Everybody can't praise God in the, uh, in the valley. Come on. People die when they're up on the mountaintop. But when you down there in that valley, you down there by yourself, and you sitting here looking to the left and looking to the right and looking up and looking that looking down, and you you don't know which way you're going. You don't where you don't know where the money's gonna come from to pay this bill. You know, you don't know you don't know where the food is coming from. You don't know if you're gonna have a roof over your head the next minute. You don't know if your children are safe, you don't know if your grandkids are safe. I mean, even this on this last week alone. I had so many things come at me. I'm like, can I get a break? Ooh. I was like, I was like, like the Kit Kat bar. Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break of that Kit Kat bar. Like, can I get a break? But he mm -hmm. said, who I love, I have equipped. Yes. I'm doing your valley moment. You can't give me a mountaintop praise. Huh. And then I had to shake myself and I had to be reminded. David said it. I will bless the Lord at all times. Mm -hmm. I can't pick and choose when I want to bless God. I can't pick and choose when I want to serve God. Joe went through, but he didn't go through for nothing. Right. That stuck out to me. He said, though you slay me, yeah, yet, I yet mm -hmm. will I serve you. Yet will I praise you. Mm -hmm. So if he if he allows me to go through some things that are not good for me, it's a reason. It's a purpose. And that purpose is way greater. And so when you was talking a while ago about giving birth it's spiritually and naturally, my mind went to the spiritual part. Mm -hmm. Because especially, you know, women whoever, but they had children, you know the process, 
But us as being in the spirit, yes, it is time to give birth. We done went through the, the Lamaze class. We done done all kinds of classes that we had to go through. So God said, okay, you're sitting, you're in position. And when we give birth naturally, we're in position. We sitting like we're doing a sit up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So we in position spiritually. Mm -hmm. Well, knees and we're down in the valley but we're lifting up we're mm -hmm. looking up. so when are we going to start just saying <sighs> exhale let it go give it to yes, god yes 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 your cares upon me put it at my feet give it to me mm -hmm. i'm to do it and he's not a man that he's gonna lie he can't right. lie we lie he he's not gonna lie and if we walk up right and we're doing everything god tell us to do there's requirements, there's prerequisites. Mm -hmm. And you got to, and you know, when we go to school, you have prerequisites. Mm -hmm. That means those pre classes in order to get to the right classes. Mm -hmm. So you do those pre tests in order to get to the blessing, not yeah. the pre classes, but the blessings. And mm -hmm. once we get to the blessing, then there comes some more. When yeah. we get to those blessings, we mm -hmm. don't, we don't, we don't pray and fasted and cry. And that's go some more. And then once we get to that point that we're not, we're not going to worry about nothing that's going mm -hmm. on. And we're going to just pray and give it to God. He said, pray without ceasing. Yes. And we can start giving those, those, those little bitty problems to God. Let me tell you something. You're not going to worry about it. Cause you're like, okay, yes, God, you got that. You got it. Yes. You, thank you for, okay. I could do that. And that's how we have to, that's how we have to look at it. And, it's funny that you talked about leeches because we heard that last night in Bible study. You weren't there. Wow. I kid you not. Pastor talked about that leech last night. And that thing brought, I mean, when she talked about that, that thing opened my eyes because I did not realize there were spiritual leeches. In the, and she even took us to the scripture, a horse leech. And when you think about what a leech is, and I'm like, that's some nasty thing. I don't want that on me. But mm -hmm. that's what people are. You mm -hmm. talked about book launch guess what people was leeching trying to get close to you because they wanted to do you and if they could take and sap 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 all they could get from you you wasn't gonna be good for nothing but guess what you persevere mm -hmm. and god he get he he builds you up he built you up for such a time as this i mean come on you're a single mother child in college got one getting ready to go you by yourself paying bills you was able to write not one book, not two books, but three books, got several businesses, and then you go away once a month just to just to serve our country. That's enough to give God thanks for. Amen. 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 Never mind. I got four children. How am I gonna make it? I'm by myself. I got more bills than I got money, but God supplies your every need every time. Yes, Even when you don't have nothing. God always sends somebody by to, to be a blessing. Yeah. So I mean, even for that, I mean, you was in your valley for those couple of days, but you didn't stop giving him a mountaintop praise. I know that's right. <laughs> you kept on praising him, right? You know, and you and you know this already. What did what you say? And you know this, man. You know, and you know that. Because I I know that withholding praise, because you know, one thing I know, praise confuses the enemy. It yeah. confuses the enemy because a lot of times when we sit and soak, uh, it it allows us to we start thinking about all the all the was been stuff, all the things that all the filthy rags that we were, you know, that we were doing, all the things that we've done in our in our in our was been days, and all the you know, like I know God can't use me because I used to drink, I used to smoke, I used to party, I used to hang out, I used to do this, I used to do that, and you start listing all the negative things that you've done in your life. Well. How about you take out a pen and paper? I think that's going to be a homework tonight. Um, that yeah, that is going to be a homework tonight. And you write down all the things that you who you used to be, put your was been your past tense, and then I want you to realize on the other five two columns, one that has you know who you used to be and the things that you used to do, and I want you to to write on the other side all the things that you have been able to to accomplish from those times where you used to be because then that that way i think with having it i'm a very visual person i'm a visual analytical and so being able to to visually see that you know yes i used to drink and smoke but now i'm able to be healthy enough to to understand what the purpose of fasting is i i used to i used to you know 
uh, cuss and complain. Now I can give God glory and thank him for how he's allowed me to overcome and endure those things. You know, that the, there's a lot of things that, you know, sometimes we overlook uh, how we used to be and how we are today. And so God really wants us to take a look, a deep dive and look at ourselves. That's why he said we need to examine ourselves. That ain't my words. It's in the Bible. It say it in there. It says for us to examine ourselves. Or in the, you know, in military terms, we call it a, a AAR, an a, a after action review, right? So after you do something, then you do an after action review. I love that. And so you can look at all of the things that you have been able to accomplish and achieve, where even you may not even think that it's nothing, but it means something. Where you didn't have enough here, but now you're, you know, you've paid off a um a, a car, you've paid off a home, you've, you know, like you've paid off some bills and some of those things. You raise your credit score, even if it was two, three points. It's some of these things that sometimes we overlook. That's why I say we take the little things for granted. We don't look at the, we don't look at it. You know, some of us may have grown up in a place where we had to go wash our clothes um on in a scrub on a scrub board and hang them up on a clothesline. Now we have washers and dryers. There's different things that we've been able to overcome and achieve from, like you said, from where we were with the landline phone with the 50 foot cord that can go throughout the whole entire house to now we got a mobile device in our hand that's really a computer that we can see even now we're watching watching this live stream. So we've been able to overcome some of those things. And sometimes we take those things for granted. We don't realize how we've been able to overcome some of those things in our lives. And it prevents us from being able to really move forward into where we need to be because we're so we're so um, close tight with the Kung Fu grip holding on to all the things of, oh, like God can't use me because I don't sound like, I don't look like, I don't feel like, I don't act like, I don't talk like, I don't walk like, so-and-so. What's for you is for you. God put word in your mouth. God put purpose in your belly. God put gifts inside of you. The same way he did for me, the same way he did for Tammy is the same way he's doing for each and every one of you. And so you have to understand that I can't receive your blessings. God can give them to me, but it's not going to be the same as it would be for you. The same way with the gifts and tools and talents that God gives me, if he gives me yours, it's not going to operate to the magnitude that it should if it's not for me. So I have to understand that, you know, there's different things. You know, I have four boys. All of them have four different gifts and talents. You don't believe me? Let me walk you through. I have Tyrell, who's the oldest. He's my athletic child. He's he's the, the, the kid that he can pick up and he can just, you know, any pretty much any sport or anything, he can tell you commentary from probably before I was born. You know, he's just that gifted in that area. Those are some of the gifts that God gave him. He has that gift. You know, he's he's very knowledgeable. He's very wise. And now he's making a, a better decisions. But when he was a little bit younger, and I'm talking about just a couple of years ago when he graduated from high school, he was not that way. Then I have Jordan, who is my music child. He is gifted OK, in every area of music from when he first started playing the viola to now he's the church drummer where we just even remember from when he was only playing just one snare drum. to now he played the entire drum set where, you know, he was able to learn those things from playing the viola to playing the keyboard to playing the flute. to now he's playing an entire drum set for a church service, you know, so those gifts that he has. Then I have Jeremiah, who's also an athletically, academically athletic athlete, an academic athlete. Yes. And I know that's normally an oxymoron. But, you know, for him, he has those gifts. He is an honor roll student with athletic abilities that go beyond, you know, anything that, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't even know what to do. And some of the things that he does, he's just gifted in that area. And then the same with my younger son, Antoine. Antoine's the same way. He's he's like the nerd of the nerds. He's like the nerd of the, but I, when I say that, I don't mean that in a harsh, harmful way. He is a child that he just has he has knowledge about things that you know you don't even realize that a twelve year old would know certain things. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. It's a young lady. She's like um, I call her like the STEM project. Her dad always challenges her with different projects and different things, and you know she always figures it out. She puts her glasses on and always figures it out. Well, that's how Antoine is. He's that kid that he he has, he's a problem solver. That's just what he does. He's gifted in that area. And so when I say that, I use my boys as a as a um 
as a tool to see that they're all coming from the same mother. However, they all have gifts that are totally different. And those gifts that they have inside of them, God didn't give me the athletic ability. Now, I would run track, you know, back in my days, and I was really good at the time. You know, and I had some academic, I was really smart, and I got honor roll at some time. But I wasn't always an honor roll student. So there's a lot of teeter-tottering and balancing when it comes to different things. That's the reason why it's very important for you to understand your gifts. It's, un it's important for you to realize that although those four came from the same mother, they all have different gifts. The same way we all come from the same father in heaven, we all have different gifts. And they're all to be used for the uplifting of his kingdom. So we have to use the gifts that he gave us to be able to do the work here on this earth. So that's the reason why God blesses each of us with those gifts. We can't hold on to them. We don't want to take the talents and be like the man that hid the one talent because he only had one. We don't realize that that one thing that God gives us is able to, you know, expand to multitudes. Because we want to hold on to that one thing because it's like, this person got five. This person over here can do five things. This person over here can do three things. I can only do one thing, but you can do that one thing really good. And let me explain to you something. The pe people that do multiple things, they, they don't always master those things because they're so consumed with doing a little bit here, doing a little bit there, doing a little bit there, doing a little bit there. But you can take that one thing, you can master it. You can take something else and master it, so on and so forth. So the same way with our gifts, we take those gifts and we use them and we master those things and we pray about those things and we allow God to move for us to be able to have those gifts for his kingdom. God doesn't really need us. Let me remind you of that. Okay, let me just put that out there. Just my disclaimer. He don't really need us. He planted us here for a reason. He put us here so we can fellowship with one another. He put us here so we can help each other. He didn't put us here so we can harm one another with our words, with our, with our, um, with our talents. He didn't put us here so we can beat up on each other, so we can look down on one another. He brought us here so we can lock arms and we can be able to network so we can have net worth. We network to have net worth. So we can make sure that as we're multiplying one with another, where one person over here is good, better in finances, the other person over here is good at business. Put the two together, boom, you have a powerhouse. You ever heard of what they call power couples? Those are the reasons why God put us all here on this earth. Some of the things that Tammy does, Taniqua can't do. And the things Taniqua does, Tammy can't do. So on and so forth. It goes back and forth. But we help one another because we want to build up God's kingdom. And we want to see people blessed. We want to see people expanding. We want to see, I really truly want to see God's kingdom here on earth. I don't know about nobody else. When I listen to and I say the Lord's prayer, and when I say yeah, that will be done, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's what I mean. I don't mean your kingdom come, you know, my will be done. I want it to be my will, not your will. I want your will to be done, Father. I want your will to be done here on this earth because I know that you have a plan that far exceeds anything and you already know everything that's going to happen anyway. So why would we not want his will? Because he already knows about tomorrow and the next day and the next year and in the years and the centuries after that. He was here before the beginning of time and he's going to be here long after our eyes closed and our lips are so shut and we're in the ground with dirt covered over top of us. So why would we not listen to or believe or do the work of the father? Because we're so intimidated by the fact that this person has five, this person has three and I only have one. But God can multiply in those things that we're doing. Yes. Amen. Mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm. Who Lord, I thank you, 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 I thank you. I just thank you. I just thank God. I just thank God because I would not be able to sit here and tell you this. Can you know, I intercept for one second? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just praising God. I'm just thanking God for who he is. When you say that, you begin to say, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God. He does download it in my spirit. There's three things he done for me mm. specifically. Um, I'm not calling names and I'm not going to say who they are, but I heard a testimony of one lady that had lupus for years. Mm -hmm. That's to me. Mm -hmm. And to, to, for a person that you love, mm -hmm. you didn't 
what they had to go through right dealing with that 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 affliction and to hear that person say i had to get needles in my head and i'm mm -hmm. like hey and i complain about migraines I went, and they asked me about getting the, the Botox, and I'm like, no, ain't nobody putting no needles in my head, my face, none of that. But mm -hmm. the hair she went through those years getting those needles in her head, and to hear the testimony oh after those years, she was she was free of lupus. Yes. And thank thank you, you. Thank you. I tell you, thank you for her. Then there was another person. Hmm. Two people I have been praying for fervently because I love them. One person was facing a 30-year sentence, 30-year hmm. prison sentence hmm. for doing something they know not they weren't supposed to do. Hmm. We're talking about trafficking. And then when they went to court, only thing the judge said was turn your location on and be be accountable. Hmm. We call you. We know where you are. Whenever we check your location, you're where you're supposed to be. That was God. Yes. That was God because we're yeah. talking a lot of a lot of stuff, a lot of money. Then there was another situation I I experienced just a few weeks ago. Been praying for this individual, saying, "Oh, you like to play. You like to mark people. You like to do this." But then to see God deal with that person and then this person every day since then has been sending me text messages has been praying and encouraging me and i'm talking about somebody younger than me and i began to when you were saying that it, that just downloaded and i was like god you did it for her and you talking about you about what he's did for you and i'm like mm -hmm. can we just really sit back and just like hmm the things that make you go hmm, mm -hmm. that yeah. made me Hmm. God, you know what? I took you for granted for so many years. Yes. Years. When I lost my grandmother going on three years ago, I could have lost my mind. Yeah. That was hard. <laughs> she was, I, I mean, she was my first everything. You know, my first grandmother. She, my, you know, she was there. She was there for me. And then when you took her from me, I'm like, I still got my mom. I'm grateful for her. But it was something about my grandmother. Then I had to go through the the, the pain of um, not having my father in my life and mm -hmm. there just looking for love in all the wrong places and being rebellious and promiscuous and lying and backbiting and stabbing people, killing people with the little red tongue, the little pink thing, mm -hmm. killing. And then to know that my father passed three months ago and I was like, I held on to that anger for so many years. And so seven years ago, just seven years ago, I had to release it and I had to re ask him to re I had to f forgive him, which I told him I forgave him. And I said, I need you to forgive me. I need to release me so I could release him. And then when he passed just three months ago, I, I always told my mom, I said, you know, if anything ever happened to my dad, I know how I'm going to act. I know what I'm going to do. I know where I'm not going to be. And it was, I said, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But what God had, I went to his service and there was so many emotions. And all I could say was look up in the funeral and just say, God, I thank you. Because even though we didn't have that relationship, he wasn't there. However, you, you sent someone by to love me as my father, not mm -hmm. my father, but you sent somebody by to love me. Then you send your son just for me to die for me and so when i was at his service all i could do was just shed tears and say god thank you mm -hmm. because i was there when it mattered because yeah. when someone hurt you and they don't they they what they wasn't present most people were like oh well hey i don't want nothing to do with that but when he when he got sick i got the call and i and i was and i had so many mixed emotions but i said you know what he still had a soul and I told the doctors, whatever you had to do to preserve his life, preserve it. Don't let him die. But let just let him know I'm on my way. I was on my way to go see him. Just let him know I'm, I was praying for you. But he had died an hour and five minutes before I got there. Mm -hmm. But when I got there, I had, when I walked in his room, he was already gone. And I had so much peace. And I said, God, 
just I pray that he got it right with you as well as he knew that he was forgiven because I forgave him and I was like, but I had peace and not every, and not when someone leaves here or on a, when you don't have a relationship with them you don't have that peace mm-hmm. and this is women's month right yes women's health month women's history month women's history month okay I'm sorry I was thinking health I'm sorry wrong age however I thought about all of that all of that could have took a toll on my body Mm-hmm. And we are we're women, and we're in the month of March. So women keep on marching, keep on making history. Taniqua, keep on keep on moving forward, keep on making history. And I said all of that to say because I feel your, I felt your burden. But guess what? Give it to him. Mm-hmm. Give it to him, because even in the moments, some things that you shared with me prior to coming on, God is even in the midst of that too. Because when I, when I, when you, when your mother shared some things as well as you, I thought about my dad with that family, with your family member. I thought about my dad because it's almost the same situation yeah. with the, the, the health issues. And all I could say was, God, my dad left, but God, do something new for that person. Yeah. And give them time to get it right. And get give the family time so they would know, and and so they can continue to build. Because I had to realize even in those moments mm-hmm. when I to be selfish and I didn't want to do, God said, "I'm not the one that hurt you. People hurt you. Yes, you your frustrations and your anger out on me because I'm not. I love you just that much that." Mm-hmm. I, I love you and I want what's best for you because you said it earlier. I have a plan, a purpose. Mm-hmm. He has that. And so we as people, we don't have to go and look for other people to allow us to have our own, her story. Yes. They have his story. We can make our own mm-hmm. and we can continue to build. And even as you're out here, promoting your business and other people are promoting other people's business and we all supporting you or this one or that one supporting you. We don't know what I'll just use you because it's you. What you out here doing, that's encouraging somebody. God be the glory. Encouraging somebody. Because guess what? You're like, I'm in a book with 20, 30 other people. Mm-hmm. But guess what? I'm going to promote them just as well if I promote myself, even if I had to promote them more. But God sees your heart. He sees your heart. He sees the very intent of your heart. You're not even thinking about you. You're putting Taniqua on the back burner, on that rear burner, and you're promoting other people. So God sees that. And because of that, he sees your heart and he's going to reward you just for So as you're going out here promoting other people, you are also building up your brothers. You're building up your sisters and their most holy faith. I mean, because now you got people like, oh, little old Taniqua from back in the day with her working days. She can write a book. She can do customized jewelry. She could do this. She could do that. She she talks this way. She has eloquent in speech. Come on. You are helping somebody. They might not tell you, but people are watching you. So continue to make history. Continue mm. to do what you're doing. Continue to show that light to your boys. Because guess what? You're teaching them their their boys to men. You have shown them how to be boys. You might can't tell them everything to become a man, but you set that standard. You gave them the foundation. Keep on doing what you're doing. And I said, mm. okay, even when I shared what I just shared about those three people and my dad, We've had intimate conversations, Taniqua, and you just don't know how much those conversations and just you telling me how many times you love me, just saying, let me give you a hug and coming to the hospital to see about me at midnight. That encourages me and makes me want to do better and be better and to be a better sister to someone else. Because guess what? Let's be honest. Not everybody's going to be real. Mental health is real. Mm -hmm. I mean, people surrounding me there's people that love me, but when somebody, you can see somebody that's going through just like you, and you forget about your situation, and you can go and encourage them and pull them out of the muck and mire, and you can pull them out of that slot, come on now. 
So I'm saying this to you on tonight to encourage you. This was for you on tonight. Don't think that what you're doing is not being noticed. Don't mm -hmm. think labor is in, is in vain. Your son is out here. He's doing greater than what you was doing. Tyrell. He's mm -hmm. out here making t-shirts as well. He's getting ready to build his, his business. is getting ready to go forward because you gave him the tools. Amen. Him how to do it. He's seen the tears. He's seen the cries. He's seen you pulling your hair out and your eyelashes off. He's seen all of that. So mm -hmm. because he, did that, he said, well, let me do it another way and it's going to be better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Music. He see that. He he writes you he writes you notes and saying, Mom, you even though I I might not show it, but guess what? I love you and you done this for me and I thank you for it. Your other two, I mean, come on, your baby boy cooking you, little chef. <laughs> really? I mean, so you I mean what I'm saying that because you you are a blessing to so many people. So many people. You are a blessing to so many people. So do not think that bridging the gap is for nothing. Do not think wave is for nothing because it's, it's, it's helping people. You have people talking about this podcast, Seattle, California, people talking everywhere. Continue doing what you're doing. Nehemiah said it best. I'm about a great work. Stay on the wall, Sonequa. Amen. Stay on the wall. Because you're still writing your stories. You're still writing the chapters. Keep on doing it. Keep on building. Because I'm sure somebody's on here is going to say, yes, she's helped me. Even when you didn't have, you still gave out of, gave out of your nothing. And it might have been your nothing, but it was something to them. So keep on doing that. Because I'm being honest, you have helped me and you just don't even know. Just you can't I'll give you three times. And then we 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 done change the number. And so yes, I I am saying this on live. I actually love you. And I thank I thank you for everything that you've done. When I wanted to give up, when I wanted to lose my mind, yes, I have other people that I could go to. But when you when you come to somebody at midnight in the hospital. And you begin to minister them to them, keep doing it. I'm proud of you. That's mm -hmm. it. Oh. Mm -mm, you ain't gonna let these let these lashes ain't gonna come off tonight, boo. Uh-uh. You ain't trying, I, you ain't gonna make me cry so these lashes come off. Not tonight. And 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 this you're saying this is women's history month. So mm -hmm. let me talk about you on tonight. You from the Eastern Shore? I mean, we got other people that's from the shore, but you're somebody I went to school with as well as some others. But is that, I mean, I'm looking at you like, could I have made it with four boys? By myself? Girl, bye. And went to the military? No, ma'am. I still want to call my, my grandma, but I call my mommy for, for any and every little thing. I call my mom too. Yeah, but don't I'm saying. Her, don't think that her phone don't ring. My mom phone ring all the time. I'm I'm grateful, and, and she's she's the she's like the biggest supporter. My mom is driven. She drove out to Missouri when I had Tyrell. Her and my grandmother, because you know my grandma don't drive. They yeah. drove from Eastern Shore, Virginia, to Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, which was 19 hours one way, just to come and see my firstborn. And then drove back home. They stayed for a while. I think it was probably like a week or so. And then came and then went back home. I think the only reason why she didn't come to one of my military events was because I literally begged her not to come. And she still was going to come. And I said, Mom, please just don't come. By the time you get here, it's going to be over. But she has attended every one of my ceremonies, promotions, and, you know, um, I, I really don't know what I would do without my mom for real. Like she really um, has helped me. She showed me what mother, what a mom is supposed to be, you know, 
Did we always get it right? And I say we, her being a mom, me being a mom. No, we don't always get it right. We we make some mistakes. I don't hold her accountable for, you know, what happened, you know, when we were growing up. Because the way I see it is my mom did the best she could with what she had. And, I, I, and as a mom, once you become a mother, you understand that. And it may have taken until I had, you know, my first or second child to understand that. But I realized that I did the best that I could with what I had. And I do it again, and I'm I'm thankful for her. So you know, mom, I love you. She knows that already. And my grandma, who's her sidekick, because they don't go nowhere without each other. They're like the um the double mint twins. They roll together, and so they really help me. You know, even with the children. You know, when I gotta leave and go away, I don't just leave those kids and. And, um, and there are times when I can leave them by themselves because they're mature enough. They can get up, they can cook, they can clean, they can do all those things. But, you know, um, to be there with my mom because they're older, you know, so I am so grateful yeah. for my village, you know, um, and there's a lot of things I don't share with my mom because I don't want her to worry. And I don't want my grandma to worry because I know how they feel about about things going on and they 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 get they worry and then they'll do they'll try to intervene right and so i have to withhold things from them in order for me to be able to be the woman god has called me to be so i have to not tell them things they get mad about it and they find out later and it's okay right but you know as once you know that's what the bible says you know once i you know once i became a man i put away those childish things i can't always I can't always just be dependent upon mom, grandma, and so on and so forth. I really have to really pull on God and trust him in that. And so that's the one thing that I learned from her is to not be so dependent upon her for everything. My mom knows if, if I'm calling and asking for something, it's because I absolutely need it. And I have exhausted every possible resource that I could possibly exhaust. But I'm going to, you know, and she all, I don't know what she does. She got like a magic wand or something. <laughs> she got, she got a magic wand or something and she just makes stuff happen. And so, you know, and I think that's what my kids think too. My, my, my kids think, you know, whenever they ask for different things that mom has a magic wand, it's just that we've learned to be more wise in our thinking. That's where the war to wisdom part came from of um, bridging the gap is that, you know, um, the wars that we had to fight growing up in order to get to where we are, we had to channel that. And that's why it's the number two and not T-O-2 because it takes more than one person because God said where two or more are gathered together, he would be in the midst. So that's the reason why you say, you see bridging the gap from war to wisdom. And so we know that, the wisdom part is what helps us because when we don't know what to do, we ask a God for wisdom and he gives it to us generously. So uh, how I do what I do, people ask me all the time. I really don't know. I really trust God in every single thing, everything. I don't, I don't allow myself to do things without asking him first, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to say? Is this where you want me to go? Is this who you want me to connect with? Because the one thing that I've learned is by doing things the, the Taniqua way, it doesn't always work out so well because I want to, again, we have to, we want to hold on to the, the reins of the horse we want to be able to navigate, but God wants to be our pilot and we want to take that right from him. And so I have to really trust him in everything that I'm doing. And there are times when I'm like, Lord, I'm overwhelmed. I really need to, to let go and relinquish these things. And he will show me what to do and what to say and how to let go of some things because those things are not producing any fruit. And I understand that because you have you want to be effective in everything that you do. So I'm grateful for every opportunity and every door that God has opened for me because I would have never, if we go back to high school, I would have never imagined um, doing some of the things that I'm doing now. I wouldn't even imagine having four children, honestly. You know, um, I wouldn't imagine being back on the Eastern Shore. That's for sure. I ain't no lie about that. But, you know, I know that he put me where he needs me to be for a reason and for a season. And so I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. So I thank all of you who tune in. I thank you for your support in whatever capacity that you help me. Um, when you offer words of encouragement, texts, you know, phone calls, whatever, you know, um, Leslie Chandler, she sends me words of encouragement constantly, you know, and she's, 
you know, almost any and everything I'm doing, she's right there. She's, uh, I need this. I want that. Uh, I want, I want to support. Like she's a huge supporter as well. And, you know, your mom, Miss Norma, she sends words of encouragement as well. You know, there's a lot of people that do a lot of things discreetly. They don't like to be called out. And I understand, but I, I like to give people their flowers while they can smell them. And I'm grateful for them. You know, Tanetta will call me uh, when she gets off work. And I might be in the middle of something, but I'm just calling to check on you. She don't really realize how much that means to me. And she didn't call me today. And I was a little upset about that. But um, I'm just messing with her if she's on here. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful for um, for my life. Because, yeah. you know, if I was to breathe my last breath, I can say, Lord, I thank you that I've had a great life. I've been able to accomplish things that I never thought that I would accomplish. And if you allow me to see yet another day. Uh, I'm going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep doing even when I don't feel like it, because that's really when it when the rubber meets the road. I don't feel like it all the time, but I still have to get up because you said that you give me breath in my body to do the work that you gave me to do. And I have to keep moving. So I can't say, oh, I got these four kids. I can't do nothing because, you know, I could I could easily make up any excuse in the world and say, I don't want to do this because of my children, because of this, because of that. But I don't. You know, I do, I have now learned how to balance different things and there's some things I want to do and I literally just cannot physically do them because I have to understand there's a time that you also have to rest and God gives us wisdom and understanding that. So I'm grateful. I am eternally grateful for all of it. All and because of it. you called my mom, I, I, was gonna call, I wasn't going to say it because she's always shy, but I thank God for my mommy because Every morning, just about, she's praying and she'll send me a text. I was just praying for you, and it's always the right time, and she's always sending me something encouraging. So, Mommy, if you're on here, I love you, and I thank God for you. And that time, I thought my mom was going to leave this world, same time my grandma did. But, however, I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. She has become my best friend. There's nothing I can't say to her. And she would, if I'm wrong, she'll give me the, the, the beady eyes and say, Tammy. So I just thank God for every time I come to her. If I'm upset, she'd be like, well, you know what God would say? So I thank God for my mommy. That's my little brother dog. She, she, you know, I love her. And she was the one that helped me with my kids, her and my grandmother, like you said about your mom and grandma. And she's still helping me. Yeah. So, I mean, I, and I thank God because it do take a village. She Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And I thank God for you and everyone on this line. Yes. We thank you. Thank you all for your support. Um, it's been two years where yeah. Bridget and the Gap. Two years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Two years with Bridget and the Gap. And there's still more to come. So yeah. we have um, this Women's History Month. We have some amazing ladies that are going to come and grace the um the stage um to do it with us some of them you know some of them you do not and of course we like to bring resources to people and to be able to connect others so we can network with one another and build each other up so that's the goal and the purpose of being able to bridge the gap and so um i'm just i just you know i'm excited i i don't i think i'm empty i'm gonna be able to sleep pretty good tonight i thank god for that um, even though who are our YouTube followers. So if you haven't already, um, do me a favor for those of you who are watching, go um into our YouTube and subscribe. And um, you know, we're not just on Facebook. I'd love to see some of you all uh, um transition over to YouTube as well because we're on YouTube, Women Achieving Victory on the YouTube um channel. We have some subscribers, it's like so many subscribers, but we'd love to um to boost up the YouTube as well for those who are not watching on Facebook or can't watch on Facebook for whatever reason. But um, let's go back to the homework, the homework for tonight. And and I think that's a really good idea is I want you to write a list on, on, on one sheet of paper. I want you to write down all of the things that you used to do, all the things that you used to do, right? And then I want you to write down on the other side of the paper next to those things, all the changes that you've seen from where you used to be, how you used to be to right now, like to tonight. And I encourage you to do that. I'm going to give you until next week because I really want you to look at it because that way you're able to see 
how you've been able to endure those hardships as good soldiers, as the Bible says. And not only that, how you've grown and how you've been able to allow God to move you from where you were to where, you were to where he needed you to be. And I think that's really going to help you as you move forward in what he's telling you that you need to do. Because a lot of us sometimes, and I say us because I'm included as well, we get nervous. We get um, we get frustrated. You know, um, we get distracted. And so right now we said there's no more excuses. We're not going to be distracted. We're really going to trust the process. We're going to trust God's process. So being able to do that exercise, I think, will help us being able to move from where we were to where God needs us to be. Because then we can look at it and say, man, I used to do this. Now I'm over here. It's And then you can celebrate those wins because God wants us to celebrate every win because it allow us to think in our mind. We've been able to overcome some of those obstacles. So it helps us to be able to grow because we love the win. We love winning, right? So we can look at them and look at them as, as um, small victories man and then give that battle to god that's what we're gonna do amen 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 um man i know this has been a little bit longer than norm i think we got filled up and i'm just so grateful for this um sammy i'm gonna ask you to close us out in prayer and i ask that um that you will cover the families around the world um i ask that you would keep my uncle in prayer his name is thomas uh he's currently um on a ventilator right now uh his his um, circumstances did get worse over the course of the last 24 hours but we know that god is able so i ask that you would um pray for him my grandmother um that's her son um my mom's the oldest so it's, the, it's her, my mom's younger brother and i ask that you know we continue to keep covering on our children so for those of you who are watching i ask that you would continue to cover our elderly. I ask that you will continue to cover our children. And I ask that you will continue to cover families and allow families units to be able to stay connected. Because what I'm noticing is that the family unit is starting to slowly fall apart. And when one of the pioneers um, leave the earth, yes. what happens is they take away a lot of things with them. And then there's a huge disconnect. So, of course, at Bridging the Gap, we want to be able to bridge that gap and continue to keep arms locked and move forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. Dear wise and eternal fathers, once more and again, Lord, that I come. And God, I come with the goodness of my own, oh God, but God, I come to lean and depend on you. Asking you, God, just for a favor, God, that you forgive us, God, for anything that we said or done that was contrary to your word. And Father, creating us a clean heart, Lord God, and you renew a right spirit within us, oh God. And God, we want to thank you on tonight, God, for this podcast on tonight, for the visionary on tonight, God. And God, even as she goes to sleep on tonight, give her sweet rest, oh God. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, even the vision that she has, God, those things that she written down that she's not shared, God, we ask, oh God, for an increase, oh God. Oh God, increase in her finances, oh God, increase in her health, God. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and God, each and every person on this line, oh, God, whatever they're standing in the need for, God, we ask, oh, God, that you come and see about them, oh, God, and God, that you incline your ear to them, oh, God, you hear that faintest cries, God, that tears, God, that you answer their prayers, God, oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, God, and God, I ask, oh, God, that you touch the Matthews family on tonight, oh, God, God, they present their brother, their uncle, their son up to you on tonight, oh God. And God, we know that you're able, God, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think, oh God. And God, we ask, oh God, that you just give them another chance, oh God. God, let not my will, God, not their will, God, but you let your will be done, oh God. Because God, when you do it your way, God, it will be done right. And God, we ask, oh God, that you continue, God, to touch them as a family, God, touch them as a whole, oh God. God, continue to send healing virtues all through that family, oh God. Every family that's represented on this line on tonight, oh God, send for of healing, oh God. God, we call healing God, deliverance, oh God, even redemption on tonight, oh God. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and God, unite all families together, God. The children everywhere, God. Even give the, send someone by God to encourage them, oh God. Let them know that they are not forgotten, God. Show them love, God. Sh let people show them love, God. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, our brothers and sisters, God, that we don't even know about, God. We ask, oh God, did you touch their hearts, oh God. God, touch their minds, oh God. Touch their spirits, oh God. Even that situation 
situations, God, mend the brokenness, oh God. God, we ask, oh God, that you do a new thing, oh God. And God, even my our mothers on tonight, God, our children, grandchildren, God, anybody, God, we ask that you cover them, oh God. Even the homeless on tonight, God, we ask, oh God, that you send someone by just to feed them, oh God, to give them an encouraging word, even a small God. We ask, oh God, that you do these things, God. We know there's nothing too hard for you on tonight, oh God. And God, we're going to thank you, God, for everything that was said on tonight, God, that you will let it fall on good ground, God. Let it fall on someone's heart, God, to do better, God. As we continue to build each other up, God, as we ask, God, that you equip us, oh God. God, just have thine own way, God. Move, God, in the midst of every storm, God, every situation, God. And God, I'm asking, God, for peace for this family on tonight, God. God, give them peace on tonight, oh God. The peace that surpasses all understanding, God. God, I'm asking, oh God, even let your healing virtue, God, go out on the line on tonight, oh God. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Rapha on tonight, oh God. God, we know that you're able, oh God, to do anything but fail. And God, you said there's nothing too hard for you, God. God, we're giving it to you, God. We're placing it in your hands, God. We're putting it at your feet, oh God. Every burden, God, every heartache, God, every tear, God. God, everything, we're giving it to you, God. We're putting it at your feet, God. We're putting it on you on tonight, God, because, God, we know that you're able to carry it, oh, God. And, God, we know that you there is light on the other side, God. And, God, we will bless you in spite of God. God, on tonight, we're going to be like David on tonight. I will bless the Lord at all times. And God will praise this shall continually to be yeah, in our Lord. God, we thank you, God. And God, we ask that you cover our homes on tonight in your blood, God. Let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us, oh God. And God, let us all have sweet rest on tonight, oh God. God, we're going to go to bed on tonight giving you praise, God. We're going to go to bed thanking you, God. And God, when we raise up on tomorrow, God, God, let us raise up, God, with a thanksgiving in our heart, God. A praise on our lip, oh God. And God, let us not look at the circumstances, God. But God, let us look to you, God. God, because we know, God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, God. And for that, God, we say thank you, God. And God, tonight, God, this is my prayer in Jesus' name. And I'll so you know, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you all for tuning in for this week's episode of Bridging the Gap from War to Wisdom. Uh, I am really excited about what God is doing in your life tonight. So go ahead and get started on your homework. Make sure you write the list of things that you used to do. And then look at all the things and the changes that God has allowed you to overcome and endure in your life. I pray that you have a wonderful winning Wednesday on purpose and that you will come back and join us next Wednesday at 8.05. I know it's a strange odd time, but I know that if we give odd numbers, then you tend to remember them better. So at 8.05 on Wednesdays, come back and join us here on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. Um, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Women Achieving Victory on YouTube. Like, subscribe, comment. You'll see the same um, stream on YouTube as well, but we want to be able to boost up our numbers on YouTube. So thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, and I pray that you have a wonderful winning Wednesday. Okay. Good night. Good night.